Hello, uh, welcome to Conway Video. Uh, so in this video, I want to do uh, uh, have a bit of a talk about um, something uh, that's been really useful for me. And I don't know how many developers actually do this. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen a lot of developers do it, but uh, I'm interested to see if you do it and how many other people do this. And this is the idea of um, of writing code just to just to understand how a system works. Now, I suppose a lot of us probably do this already with things like, uh, like when we're debugging, for example, we're trying to find out why something broke, we'll use console.log or whatever the statement is in our programming language that we're using uh, to log out some, some, some of the code. Um, but I often go a step further than that, and I'll even actually go in and change the code just so I can get it to function a certain way and, uh, and so that I can then... Um, um, so I can then, um, uh, you know, see what happens when a particular path of code runs. So say, for example, you've got this, this function, right? And it's got all these if statements, right? So it, maybe it's got three nested if statements. And then within those statements, it's got some small piece that runs. And when you debug it uh, and you run the application, you find that the, the, code, the, the execution flows, but it goes past that code. It, it skips past it and goes to the next line. And you really want to run that code because you want to see what happens when that code runs. So then, um, you know, you might think, well, how can I get all these conditions to, to become true and, wh and what can I do? And it's also complicated. But then a, a really easy shortcut often is to just remove some of the conditions, comment them out so that the code just runs. Or you can go in and like and look at the variables that are being referred to and just change the value in code. So literally change the code, put in an assignment statement, give them a specific value that will cause that piece of code to execute. And so it's a little bit like, uh, I mean, it's like having a microchip or something or having an electric circuit board where you've got all these circuits that hook up and at some point you've got a little light bulb and you want that light to go on. So you just temporarily rewire the circuits just, just enough so that they go from the battery or the power source or whatever straight to the light bulb and it lights up and you get the effect you want. And, uh, and, of, and of course, that this is, software is the perfect medium for this because software is so flexible. I mean, it's just characters in a text file. You can easily go in and change anything you want. And uh, it, this becomes a very easy flow or, or pattern to work with as well when you have version control like Git or something because then it's very easy to go into Git and see what your changes are and revert them if you don't want to keep them. So you don't have to worry about this code kind of accidentally getting checked into the main repository because you can always go in there and see the code before you do any commits and you can always back out that change. You, you can always revert and take away that change. Um, and so I found this is really useful and, um, and uh, then it's good also to be careful, uh, I think, how you do this. So you, you don't want to go making a large number of changes that you can't keep track of. I try and keep these changes very small and focused. So in my head, I'll be constantly sort of running through um, uh, what do I want um, the code to be like. It's a little bit like a mathematical proof in a way. It's sort of like, here's like a, a logical construct, which I want to then, you know, I want to, I, I want this, this logical construct to be reflected in the code so I can then see what happens. Um, when I when I run the code in that way, um, and so that you know it might be for example, um, you know I want to simulate what happens when um, somebody signs up who is fifty five years old and is married and has a dog. I mean I'm being a little bit kind of uh, I guess quirky with this, but anyway, um, this is just an example, right? You know what I mean? These are these sort of criteria or these these little specific data points that you sometimes need to simulate in order to get your application to run a certain way. So you remember the goal, of course, you, you keep the goal in mind first and foremost, which is the goal is whatever the goal is X. Maybe I, I, I need to add this new feature where this new, this new menu item adds up, uh, shows up in a menu, for example. So I want to add an item to a menu. So you think, okay, the system has to be in a certain state for that thing to show. So then you go through and you're like, Okay, the, the user has to be a 55-year-old married person with a dog in order for that item to show up on the menu. So you, you very specific and precise, specifically and precisely only change those variables or those parts of the code that you need to change to get the system into that state. And then you keep that very separate. You separate those changes in your mind at least. Um, and maybe you can put comments in the code as well. But you keep those very separate 
from the actual change that you want to make to the code. So you've got one thing which is the change, the changes you're making to get the code and the application into a certain state when it's running. But then the secondarily, you've got the changes that you actually want to make. So that's the things about the system that you more permanently want to change, which is, for example, you want to get that new menu item to show up in the menu. And if you keep those separate in your head, and you can keep them separate in the code as well, if you put like comments, you can very clearly put little comments in to help yourself. They're kind of like little guides or little stencils where you can see uh, you can see where you made a change and that, that change isn't permanent. Then you, you kind of um, have it, then you've got the code sort of in a place. It's a little bit like, you know, a building where you want to change one part of a building. So what do you do? You put up a framework, you put up all these big metal, uh, metal sheets and, and metal kind of uh, columns in order to keep the rest of the building in place so that then you can just modify that one little part, pluck it out, swap it with something else, and then you're done. And so yeah, I found this to be a really, really useful way of programming. Um, it's it's actually was inspired by a bit of reading as well. So I mean, I'd been doing this sort of thing myself already, but there is a book called The Pragmatic Programmer, you might have heard of it. And in that book, they have a very similar method. Um, and uh, But it, it's basically that idea that uh, you write, you're writing code, not that's permanently going to go into production, but you're just writing code just to get the system into a state that it needs to be in, in order for you to make your change. And so I've, I was doing this for a long time already, but I think uh, it dawned on me, you know, after a while that this is actually a, a very valid technique. It's, there's nothing dodgy or hacky about it. This is a very valid way of working with code, especially working with large pre-existing pieces of code that you need to make one change to. It's, it's gonna be different, of course, if you're writing code from scratch and you can just, you know, write the code immediately, but, uh, you know, if you're changing a structure of code that already exists in a very specific way, um, it's a great idea to, uh, to to be able to get that system and that code into a state that you can just achieve what you want. Again, thinking very clearly and precisely about the change uh, that you're making um, and, and keeping separate the changes that you're making temporarily to get the system into a state versus the changes that you're going to make more permanently which are the changes to the actual way that the software functions and, and that those are the changes that you really want to keep for the long term. Keeping those, being very distinct and clear in your head about what those two things are, keeping them separate, I think is a great practice, a great idea. And um, um, the yeah, the, this way of working with code can be, can be uh, really handy, really useful. Um, I think it can make for, uh, it can be a much safer way of making a change. I, I, I do think uh, it's very easy to just see the code that you need to change and just think, oh, I know how that's gonna work. I'll just make that change and everything will be fine. I'll just check it in. But it takes a bit more discipline, but I think it's 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 much more, uh, much better to, to have that discipline to then go and always test that code. And maybe you don't necessarily have a unit test, but you can then manually test the code and set the system up uh, with these sort of changes, uh, facilitating changes that I just talked about. You can set the system up, set the application up in such a way that it will run your change and then you can test your change manually and make sure that your change really does do the thing that you want it to do because the last thing we want is having bugs go into the code and then having to stay back late at work to fix them or having to uh, you know, go back and fix them another time. So we want to be in control of the changes we're making and, and I think this is also very important and a very important practice uh, for making sure that you, uh, making sure you, you can get your application into the right state so that you can do that that sort of testing so that you can test the feature um, you know manually and make sure that it really does work the way you intend it to work under the under those circumstances um, and so yeah this um, this is uh, yeah the, the technique of writing uh, writing code in order to change code uh, writing code in order to uh, change state in order to then exercise. I like to use distinct sort of terminology for this as well. So I think exercising is a good term I like to use. If I want to exercise a piece of code. So I want, I want the, um, I don't just want that piece of code to compile, but I also want that piece of code to actually run in the CPU. I, want, I almost imagine when I'm looking at the code, I almost imagine the code actually going through the CPU somehow. Uh, don't ask me how I imagine that. I just imagine it, but it's sort of, I imagine it running and so, and that, that really helps to also have that comfort of knowing as I'm writing the code, I'll be able to execute this. I don't just have to write this code and just 
push it into this black box and then just fingers pro crossed and just hope and pray that it'll work. I can actually change the application, change the code base and make it run this piece of code and then make sure, verify that it actually does what I think it should do. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I think it's a good, a good way to go. Um, and uh, as you do, as, as I'm doing this a lot and practicing this, te this technique, I'm getting better and better at it. So uh, I'm just getting used to, um, you know, as soon as I even begin a piece of work, I'm already looking at the code around it and saying, okay, how can I get that, this code to run? How can I simulate this state that the system is in? How can I then reason about that state and about what change I need to make in order to get it into the state I want it to be in? And, and yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I, I think it's not just a technique, but it's also a technique that can become a skill. It can be a habit that can you can get better and better at over time. This practice of of writing code in order to you know get the system into a testable state, so you can then run your test. And uh, yeah, there's all kinds of tools as well um, that I might um, touch on in a future video. But one tool is uh, you can use um, that can be useful is um, uh, a tool called Charles Proxy. Uh, this is more for web developers, but you know this is something that can also be useful for simulating the back end being in a certain kind of state, so that you can get, then get the front end to be behave a certain way, uh, or you know get your application logic to behave a certain way on the back end. Um, but anyway, that's probably a topic for a future video. But I think the the main thing I wanted to cover here is that you know don't be scared to write code, uh, or don't feel you know dirty or hacky about writing code whose only purpose is to get the application to behave differently. Uh, that's a really valid technique, I think, in my experience. And uh, as long as you don't check in that code, you're sweet. And that's a good, uh, that's a good strategy. So thanks for watching.